The 2nd of January marked a first in human history. A Chinese moon rover managed to land on the far side of the moon. If you want to know more about how the Chinese landed on the far side of the moon, how they even communicate to us from that far side, and what the far side of the moon even is, then like this video and leave a comment down below saying, Yes! Moon! Yes! And I'll hook you up. So while there's a lot of exciting science happening right now with deep space exploration using low frequency radio waves, the exciting thing on this was a small canister with lots of different seeds on it. This container had soil, rocket, cress, potato and cannoli seeds, as well as cotton seeds, yeast and fruit fly eggs. After 12 days, one hardy cotton seed managed to germinate and started sprouting. This was a first for humanity. We've managed to grow plants on the moon. So after I found all this out, I rushed to go and get a video out of it. Started researching and BAM! Let us take a moment of silence for the poor seedling who couldn't. Okay, so there were a lot of things wrong with this experiment. First of all, it wasn't the main payload, it was far too small. In fact, it was really part of a PR stunt by the Chinese government designed to encourage kids from all over the country to try and engage with what was going on. So the whole growing plants on the moon idea was actually from a winner of a kids competition. The whole moon rover is designed to shut down during the 14 night long lunar night time. This is to survive the minus 53 degrees temperatures. So what happened was during this shutdown, the automated heating and lighting system also shut down, causing our poor wee sapling to freeze at blisteringly cold temperatures. There isn't any coming back from that. Here are my thoughts. Why would you want to grow plants on the moon? How would you do it? And why is it so difficult? So firstly, why? Well, if we ever want to send people to other planets or even other stars, then we're gonna need to stop on the way to replenish our supplies, including food, water, and fuel. The moon could be a good first port of call. The gravity isn't as strong as it is on Earth, so you need less fuel to get out of the moon's gravity. Sending people away is one thing, but if we're ever going to have a permanent base on the moon for deep space exploration, then doing that without requiring constant supply from Earth would be an absolute bonus. The benefits of having a scientific base, like the one there is in Antarctica, but on the other side of the moon, would be huge. The amount of science that we could do in like low gravity systems or exploring in frequencies that we can't do on Earth would be amazing. NASA and other space organisations have actually been growing plants in space for the best part of the 21st century. For the first ever certified safe to eat for humans, plant grown in space, eaten in 2015. But you get a lot of added benefits growing on the moon rather than growing on the International Space Station. For one thing, you have more space. Growing plants on a spaceship takes up valuable space and resources. You also need to be really careful about microbes and microorganisms contaminating the rest of the space station. On the moon, you're not restricted by that. Not only you've got space for the plants themselves, but space to produce the energy required to grow them. You've also got a soil of sorts. The moon has a similar composition to rocky parts of the Earth, so the moon has a tough crust with a mantle on the inside. But any time the moon gets hit by an asteroid, it breaks up the rocks into lots of little parts, so these could bring benefits to growing plants on the moon rather than on a spacecraft where you don't have the natural resources that you have on the moon. And then another benefit of growing on the moon is, well, gravity. Yeah, it's kind of hard to grow plants when you're in orbit around the Earth when there isn't really an up or down direction. On the International Space Station, what they've designed are these special pillows to help capture the roots in all directions and then shine a light from one particular direction to help the flowers grow in that one way. On the moon you don't have these problems. Because there is gravity there, albeit less gravity than there is on Earth, the plants will naturally grow the roots downwards and flower upwards. There are a lot of difficulties with growing on the moon though. Why is the moon the worst place to have a party? Because there's no atmosphere. Hey! But really, plants do need a carbon-rich atmosphere to grow, and the moon doesn't have any. Do you know what plants also need? Sunlight and water. If you're going to live completely independently on the moon, you're going to need to find a way to synthesise water out of hydrogen and oxygen, neither of which are abundant on the moon. And then you need to use that to water not only people, but plants as well. And then there's that little problem that we discussed before. 14 days of day followed by 14 days of night. Plants would need a lot of energy to, you know, not freeze to death during these 14 days every single month. So yeah, we might be quite a long way off from seeing moon colonies growing their own plants. But that's not to say we might not see it in my lifetime. Now wouldn't that be cool? If we get plants to grow on the moon or another planet, I would be mega impressed. I once got asked to look after my friend's 
prized tomato plants for like a week and it did not go well. <laughs> so my question for you is, have you ever tried to grow plants? What did you grow and how did it go? Let me know in the comment section down below and I'll give you like a massive like and thumbs up because I am not green fingered and I am well impressed if you have. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Science of Death. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos. In the meantime, if you want to watch my last episode, you can click here. Or if you want to watch the video that the YouTube algorithm thinks you'll enjoy the best, you can click here. Alright, see you next week. Bye! If you want to know more about... <laughs> right.